your fear of the unknown And leave the planet you call home Leave all the thoughts you think you know It's time to let them go Let it go Extend your hands towards the stars And dip your toes in the valley of Mars Celestial storm in my backyard And the universe explodes Explodes Let's see how fast our hearts can go Cause you and I could be that comet in the sky If we hold our breath Take a leap and close our eyes We could fly I believe if we try We could fly Welcome, everybody. Nice to be with you again. This is Richard Sachs, your host on Lost Arts Radio. We're broadcasting our show for 6 17, June 17, 2018, uh, worldwide right now. And we have an important show, I think, for you. And it's a, a topic that came up real recently um, that I didn't even know about till a few days ago, and we had to do some juggling around to make it happen quickly enough and you know it fits right into what we've been talking about and and what I've been making uh, YouTube videos about lately is in this morning as a matter of fact on chemtrails and we're going to be having Russ Tanner uh, an old friend of mine and Doug's on the 24th a week from now so um, but what happened is that another friend who runs one of the many news feeds that we get all the time and work with during the week um, told me that there was a man in the Tucson area in Arizona, southern part of the state that I'm in, who was arrested for putting up signs in town, in, I guess Tucson, saying uh, that geoengineering was going on, that chemtrails were overhead, and that people should become aware of them, and it was all real. And But he was putting up lots of signs all over the town. So they didn't just tell him to stop or fine him or something like that. Uh, from what I heard, they sent a SWAT team to... Uh, break into the house where his elderly father was living, break windows, break doors, steal everything, which is unfortunately a common MO lately with uh, government agencies. For some reason, they're getting away with that. And um, also do a lot of damage to the man that was putting up the sign, uh, physically beating him up, have dogs bite him and all kinds of horrible stuff, <clears throat> and then put him in uh, jail for quite a while. So I thought, well, this is really important, and uh, we should help get it exposed and find out what's actually happening and what the truth of it actually is. Or if it's not true, find that out. But at least, you know, expose it. That's what we're supposed to do. And one of our friends, Jamie Lee, had already done an interview that this other friend of mine sent me, and I listened to that over an hour long, and it sounded like a pretty intense situation and, and something that everybody should hear about and that... Um, the man who got abused like this probably needed support from everybody who could afford to give it in one way or another. So I thought, let's try to make contact with him, get him on the on the show right away, um, because uh, things are moving very fast in his particular case. And let's find out everything about it. So the man's name is Chris Haskell. He's with us tonight. And um, we're going to go back and get the background of this and then find out what's happening now. So... Welcome, Chris, and thanks for the time and being here. It's going to be really interesting, I think. Well, thank you. Thank you. So here's what I'd like to do, I think, to just explore this since it's brand new to most of us, and it was to me recently, and that's um, we know the general character of the case that we're talking about, but let's let's go back in, in your life a little bit, what started getting you involved in uh, not only the chemtrails issue, but any other things that you were uh, being an activist in and how that came up starting from before you knew about those things and okay. then we'll go through the steps leading up to what's going on now okay well <laughs> I've, I've been awake for quite a while let's just say that because uh, I mean I remember I was extremely upset when the Oklahoma bombing had happened and I you know researched that immediately and you know just not very happy about that but right. uh, 
then you know it went on obviously 9-11 was a was a, a big one for me i mean i even knew people that were killed and, and it's like you know there was so much evidence pointing and i right. was not real happy but basically Which i think was that was about eight eight years after the oklahoma city one if i remember yeah yeah and I, I remember when I went back to uh, college to for my degree that uh, for filming, mm-hmm. uh, they had at one time I, I guess because of maybe stuff I had written on my vehicle or the fact that I was uh, handing out and I had a little stand for the American Free Press uh, at my school, and then they they had a, like a uh, administrators meeting, and my teacher comes and talks to me, and he says, "How come I was just." in administrators meeting about you and whether we want you at our school or not. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. Why is that? <laughs> so, you know, I, I just was into activism and, and what were you, what were you doing at the time that they didn't like? Uh, I don't know. I guess it was my, the American free press. If you're familiar with that, that was, uh, yeah. I, I w- had gotten uh, a bunch and I would, put them out there every every whatever however often that we got them like once a month or something we put them on a, a stand and they're like what's with all that and i put signs on my on my van and i guess they're like questioning whether they even want me as a student <laughs> hmm, just just for putting up this uh yeah yeah, yeah well the paper was you know it was it, it was uh getting some people a little alarmed we, we didn't say you could put this here and yeah <laughs> And then I went on from there. I mean, it's when I started uh, with helping with the Ron Paul revolution, the first one. And, right. You know, that that's when I really got into activism a lot heavier. And uh, then my mother uh, was in bad condition in, in 2006, and she was passing away. And now it's about the same time I got involved in the first uh, Ron Paul election. But... Someone tells me on the uh, when I was researching to find out why she got the hardening of the lung, and they said they didn't know what caused it. Uh, so when I was researching it, I remember some guy tells me, "Oh, your mom died of chemtrails," and I, I came back at him, you know, like, like I ain't got time for your your stupid conspiracy theories. <laughs> so yeah. then he act, he triggered me because of that, and when I started researching it. I ended up becoming the number one Tucson activist against geoengineering. And that's what year was that when that started? It started in about uh, 2007 okay. to 2008. I started, and I'll tell you, I, I did have a YouTube channel, and my, it's not a bad size one, my Haskell Films, but um, it, what YouTube channel, in my opinion, was doing nothing compared to what I did with science. And I'll tell you, I I have put so many signs. I don't know where I got this this inside of me, but it just fired. And I I started with uh, signs the size of maybe pieces of paper, and I'd, I'd put them on boards, and I'd made they looked almost like official Tucson signs. And they said Tucson is is uh, spraying our skies, and I I put them in residential neighborhoods, and I'd cover like every sign leaving there. You know, in a residential, yeah. and I I kept switching one area to another to another, and then I went on to doing signs on on posts, uh, like in the center of the aisles and stuff like that. And then I just I don't know. One year I went I went nuts. I said, okay, we're gonna we're gonna inform one million people. Watch, and I literally when I do interviews because I randomly go around and do interviews of people. You can see all that on my channel, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> and I got to the point where it was. All the people that I'm interviewing randomly, I first ask them, have you ever seen the signs about the spraying, about the chemtrails and the geoengineering? And I am at over 50% of all people. Now, if people want to watch those interviews, is that your YouTube channel? Yes, there are some of my older ones. I, I... uh, at some point, I don't know, I stopped doing so many of those, but yeah, they're in the, because um, the YouTube channel started in like 2006. And so what's, all- is it under your name or under the film? Okay. It's called Haskell Films, it's one word, and that is uh, F-I-L-M-Z as in zebra. So and ha- Haskell is H-A-S-K-E-L-L, right? Correct, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, a famous director actually has Haskell Films, F-I-L-M-S, as a big website. So. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Haskell is sometimes spelled with an I instead of an E. So yours is E. 
Yes. Pascal Films with a Z. Okay. And that, that would be interesting. And I, I don't know if you want to hear about the, the little thing I said about the, the family tree earlier. but <laughs> Yeah, anything that's relevant to let well, people I, know. And, I and also, um, when you get into that, the Jamie Lee interview, um, how do people find that? Because that's the one that I first saw. Um, it's on A Plain Truth. And uh, I believe if you just put in Haskell or Chris Haskell's story, it yeah. usually comes up. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and and in that one, when I saw you for the first time, I saw you um, with signs not just for chemtrails, but for nine eleven and stuff for, like that. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I've actually I started with CFR nine eleven. You know, mm-hmm. Council on Foreign Relations. Um, <laughs> lots of people would ask me, "What in the heck does that mean?" And because I they wouldn't understand them, and then uh, I went on to oh man, uh, uh, Monsanto. Anytime they do a Monsanto march. I wouldn't even contact the people that are in charge of the march. I'd just make a sign, and I would put tons of them out. And they were like, oh, my gosh, this is – most people came because they saw the signs. Who who did the signs? And yeah. They great. knew exactly who, who did it. They'd always always know <laughs> the they sign. Of educating entry. people about biotech as well, huh? Yeah, yeah. I've done quite a few. I told about um, – uh, I did a, a very large sign. I put a lot of them out against uh, the smart meters. Okay. And that, that, that made uh, TEP, Tucson Electric Power, not very happy. Right. So they, they came immediately and attacked me by taking my uh, meter and putting a smart meter on when I had a huge sign there that says, you know, do not attempt m- removing it. Wow. But anyway, um, I helped with that. I, I've done what's, what's the policy in Tucson, just out of curiosity right now, for? with smart meters? Can't you opt out of them or do they uh, eliminate that? Yeah, you, you can, okay, but... They charge you like something like thirty dollars a month extra. Oh, I know, I know. For the Which for really the gracious did, approval. Right. Yeah, did 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 all the folks out there get a discount on their electric? Because they said that that was for having to come read it. Well, for all my life, whenever they that's how they read it. So they already charged us for coming yeah. read our meter. So did right. did you all get a discount when they went to the smart meters? No, I don't think so. Right. right. So yeah. Yeah, you know, they already charge us for for checking your meter, but yeah, here it was it was pretty evil. I did a story about it, and then and then sure enough, they came and swapped it back one day, and I oh, was like, "Would you?" So does that mean that? you you don't have a smart meter anymore? Well, I did, and then so I did another story about it, and what did they do? They come back and took it back. I go, "What is going on with these people?" Well, that's good if that was the end. No, it wasn't the end. They they came back and. Gave me back a smart meter. Oh, they did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mm-hmm. I was just like, what? And they they came, said nothing. They go, we're here to put your meter on, and they had an old meter, a manual one to put on because I had written this huge letter, and anyway, that they didn't even they didn't contact us back a month or more that had passed, and then finally, wham, here they come, and they gave us a, the manual meter back, and I was like, wow, that's that's weird. Because I was about did, ready to do another did, story. Did you, did you ever ask them why they finally put the smart meter back up? No. No, no. Uh, that's because my dad called him. He wanted the charge being taken off, and they said they, oh, can't, I see. I they see. can't do it. So I guess he agreed that it's okay. Okay. Yeah, that must have happened. Yeah. But I was like, God, I'd pay the difference. Heck. Right. right. Um, yeah, he went, to, he went to the hospital the first time. That they installed it. He got a, 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 a sci- cymatic or whatever, is that what they call that, uh, uh, attack on his back? This, this well, they, t- they talk about the sciatic nerve. But yeah, it sciatic be, nerve, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, it could be coming from higher nervous. up on the back. Or, uh, yeah, he went uh, like the day after they put in the smart meter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's no question they have terrible health effects. It's been really extensively documented. But yeah. I guess they figure as long as they can get away with it, as long as they're making enough money in other indirect ways from it, then it doesn't matter. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. So the current um, issue with, with the signs that it, you're going through now, yeah, when, well, did that, when did that really start? Well, that happened in March of 2017. So, and, and then I went to jail immediately, and they kept me for eight weeks. But I guess one, one thing I want to put in here is that first, and this is – yeah, did I have a little lack of faith in the, in, in the law enforcement? Because all through 2015, 
and 2016. I, I didn't check the dates exactly, but it, it's all on my channel because I put videos about this. Uh, I guess my sister called them. She's always hated me all her life, and she said that I'm crazy and I'm going to be killing all these people. And they just took it as okay. We'll go with that. And they came. And, and she called and made a complaint saying that you. Yes, mean? correct. This was back in 2015. And and, um, and and you were putting up the same kind of signs about you. Oh yeah, you? I had been doing it for years, and I still did, was. Did, did she say how it was going to kill people? No, no, no. What she told him was that I'm going to be the Jared next Jared Lofner, and that I'm going to. Oh, kill him. that you were a crazy yeah. terrorist. So, and, so and basically, she just sorry. lied to to the police, which she needs uh, to be charged okay. for 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 making false police reports. But check this out: they came to my house with a team of officers. To I guess their whole point here was to pick me up on a seventy-two hour hold to check my mental health. Okay, right, right. But apparently I wasn't here because they kept coming and they had no warrant for my arrest. And I'd see all these officers because I have cameras all the way around my house. Yeah. And I'd see all these officers pull up and they'd get their guns ready and put on bulletproof vests, come to the door and they ask for me. And my dad answered the door the first time and he said, "No, he's not here." And they said, "Okay, well we need we need to talk to him." And then they wouldn't leave. A card, because they're Tucson police and sheriff's department, but they wouldn't even leave a card. And he said, "What did he do?" And he said, "We can't." They said, "We can't talk to you about it." And so then they they kept doing this. Literally came to my house, and after five times where they came, I was like, "What is going on?" Did they they don't have a warrant, but they keep banging on the door, and we stopped answering the door. And so they just go around and hitting all the windows. Tucson police, open the door, and the, so then they'd leave. Leave no card. And so after five times, I said, this is, this is out of control. I went down to the police department, and I put my arm by. I said, go ahead, arrest me. Here's my arms. Go ahead, said, arrest me. What did I do? What, what crime did I commit? And they look it up, and she starts laughing, going, I'm sorry, sir, I can't arrest you. you we have no charges against you. But I, I can see that they were looking to talk to you. I said, okay. Well, can they, if, they, if I have no charges, can you stop coming to my house? And tr attempting to arrest me, and she's like, "Well, I, I don't know. I guess if if they've been talking to you, they'll they'll be back." And and it, it can continued through past seven times, <laughs> where I have it on camera, and you can see on my channel. I actually was making fun of them, so they were getting even really mad because I'm like, "Look at these guys. Who are these losers?" And I, I'm my channel's still on. It's on my channel. The whole video about it, it shows that there was police and there was like uh, I think. Uh, uh, cope people there <laughs> so yeah. so they kept coming when you weren't home is that what happened well, yeah, well half the time I was we just didn't answer the door oh, okay. I had cameras all the way around so they kept coming and they, so, they literally on camera would take and put on bulletproof vests and then come over so the whole issue was that you got reported as a terrorist right? yeah yeah, so that that went so on. So they're they're not a hundred percent to blame because that that would get their attention. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. But my sister's always hated me, and she 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 wanted to make sure my dad wasn't giving me uh, his property. That so it's all about money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, they wouldn't know all that stuff. Yeah, correct. So, so they might so think they that you were up. dangerous. They yeah. gave up after seven times. They, I, I mean, I was like, and is what's here's what's funny is I I work for the city of Tucson. And every place I, I worked for Suntran and I delivered uh, the bus schedules, mm -hmm. and I was always at the police department, literally in the in the fence of the police department right. every day. And they were coming looking for me every day. And I'm, I'm going, what's going on here? This is a, this is crazy. And I know they would look over and see my van. Hey, there he is, right there. Because I had the chemtrail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, I think the idea of going and talking to them was a good idea. Well, yeah, yeah, but they it didn't help. They said, well, I can see there's stuff on the computer here about you, but I can't tell you what it says. And and so it took me a while. As a matter of fact, I had no idea why they had been coming all those times until yeah. this court case a year later. They actually tried to throw that in, too, and they dropped that one because they had nothing. Yeah, it was just her saying, my sister saying that I was crazy. Oh, so, okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> So that was the end of that chapter, right? Yeah, that chapter, okay. And then so they stopped coming to my house to arrest me every couple days. And uh, and then one day they came with a tank. 
And you mean a tank with a, a giant a cannon a sticking out the front? Tank. I didn't even know Tucson had one, and I had always paid attention to see if they ever get the new ones. Yeah, they apparently had a new one because you're my not dad talking said, about a, a military truck. You're talking about the treads. Well, my everything. my dad said, "Well, no, it was okay. Okay, so it probably did have have not uh, the treads." But my dad used to be in the army, and he told me it was a tank. Okay, but see, when people think of tank, they think of this giant cannon that's thirty feet long sticking yeah, out the front. Well, it you, had a big one. He said it had a very large gun on it. <laughs> okay. So, so anyway, they came there just in case you were going to do something terrible. Yeah, no, that was to pick me up. Apparently, at this point, okay. they had a warrant for my arrest. Uh huh. And uh, and so my dad, they called him out, bullhorned him out. They had snipers all the way around the tank, and they and they said, "Come out with your hands up." And my dad came out. He uh -huh. left the door wide open, and yeah. he said, uh, "Chris is at work. He's he works for the city of Tucson." And they said, well, we're going to go in the house. He said, go, go ahead. The door's wide open. Okay. And uh, my, my neighbors all witnessed this because at this point they had all come outside. Right. And, uh, and so he said, the door's open. Please do not shoot my dogs. I have two dogs. And they, right after that, they proceeded to break the windows uh, out of the front of the house. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they entered through the broken windows. Wow. That's pretty yeah. Yeah, and then they went on for oh, three and a half or more hours, almost four hours. My dad stood in the yard, handcuffed. They went through every room. They went through the, the attic. They went through the back sheds. They, they In the back, I had a, a greenhouse that I made signs in the greenhouse. So they ripped everything out of the greenhouse and piled all my sign stencils into a big pile and broke them. Broke them, just left them in a broken pile. And then... Then uh, they continued on with the trailer and just just like dumped boxes like they were just juveniles. They kept breaking everything. And then the first thing they did was took bats to all my cameras. And then on their wow. way out, they took the camera system with them so that I couldn't have the recording. But they took bats to all my outside cameras, destroyed every one of them. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, they found nothing. They searched the house for four hours, finding, looking for bombs, explosives, guns, ammunition, uh, and they found a, they took a bunch of signs, some signs stencils, uh, oh, and a terrible, uh, they took a, uh, an X-Acto knife, because that's how I made the stencils, uh -huh. and then they took all my belongings, took my computers, every hard drive I have, I'm a photographer, they took my entire lifetime's photographs i have not one copy of them myself they took all of them mm -hmm. uh, they took every computer i had took the vehicle didn't get uh the van back wasn't even mine i was driving a company van of this guy who owns the business mm -hmm. and they took it until i got fired because after staying in jail for eight weeks uh then they still wouldn't give the van back because they said it's part of the case because it had a sign oh. in it Right, right. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's ridiculous. You know, they they sent in dogs. When they found me a couple of days after that incident with the with the tank, it took mm -hmm. a couple of days to find me because I was in another town delivering. Yeah. And, uh, and so I just said, "Whoa!" I laid low for a little while. Then they blocked off an entire one city block, one mile wide of Tucson when they found where I was, and they they brought in. There was over 26 officers when, when they got done dragging me out with police dogs and kicking me in the back of the head, just content, again and again, kicking me in the back of the head. And I had my head broken in 2011, so they're just slamming me right on my wound to where I had my head broken. Mm -hmm. It was just wonderful. And, uh, and so they took me to jail and arrested me on terrorist charges, but... I did not find out why I was actually in jail. What did they charge me on? They would not tell me. I didn't have anything until five weeks of being uh -huh. in jail before they would tell me what the charges were. And and when you found out, you said there were terrorist charges, yeah. right? Six terrorist charges. Three of them are equal to manslaughter. That means big sentences here. Okay, and what are they saying that you did that was the terrorism? What? Okay, here's what they are saying. So I have tons of signs at all times, all the way across Tucson. At that time, I probably had close to 100 signs probably posted 
at that time, currently, up in Tucson. Uh-huh. And um, so they apparently, now somebody asked me, and they do this all the time, they ask me for signs, because I'm not the only one who puts them up. So, but it had been a while since anyone had asked me. So on, uh, You mean they asked you to, to, a, if they a, can help put up some of your songs? Yes, a person did. And I don't okay. know who they are. So, right. And right. I, would always, I would always give them the same answer. I'd say, well, if you want the signs, here's my address. And I le- I'll leave them in my, in my alley right there. You can pick them up. Okay. And that's what I've done for years. And lots of people have helped me put up my signs. Okay. So somebody had recently asked me. They actually called on a phone. I didn't know who it was, but they said, "I got your number from so and so, and I need uh, I need some signs." And I said, "Okay, no problem. Um, I'll wrap them up. I'll put them in my alley. You can come by any time and pick them up." Uh-huh. And so these are the signs that they found. Because I don't know if the police did this or if maybe a guy that actually was putting up my signs and didn't like people taking them down. I don't know. But I know it was the ones they're speaking of here are definitely the ones that I gave to that person by putting him in the alley. And uh, when when they found this, they found a bag of flour on the back of the signs, three signs, uh-huh. three signs, and the, it was a harmless material, white powder. They they wouldn't tell us really what the powder was, but they said. It had a, a warning on there or a threat on there that said, don't get this on your skin. I said, okay, I didn't, big deal, I didn't put that on any signs. So That would be a very weird procedure for a terrorist to follow because yeah. then, then nobody would put it on their skin and how would they do their terrorism? It wouldn't yeah. work. I mean, and, and the way I put my sign, at this point, I had basically only, at that point, I only put them up way high, with a ladder, on a telephone pole. So nobody could read this thing. Anyway. Now, now, that brings up a question, too, because in case the telephone pole company or the utility company has to climb the pole, couldn't they get you in trouble for blocking their access? Um, they probably could, but I'll tell you what, the way this works is, is it's a private, it's, it's, the poles are owned by TEP, Tucson Electric Power, City uh-huh. of Tucson cannot remove signs, and of course they can't put them up. And there is laws saying you cannot put signs on private property, right? Which that is, I assume. But, correct. But in the city of Tucson, I don't know about your guys' cities, but uh, yeah. they people clustered always. There's always signs on them. All well, right, but usually most of those signs are pieces of paper, right? Yeah, correct. And, and they have their phone number. Right on them. They're advertising something. Well, right, but I mean, if you were putting a piece of wood that could be dangerous for somebody climbing, they could have. No, I never put them up with wood. I used just plastic political signs. Okay, so you weren't really making it dangerous for the. No, climbers. no, no. They they sometimes I'd I'd have linemen that said that I've actually spoke to linemen. They go, man, you, do you need do you need to use that many ma- nails really? And because. So you're just na- you're not nailing up a board. You're nailing up a little piece no, no. of plastic. Just plastic, and I put okay. sixteen nails on every yeah. sign. Okay, sixteen enough that you could you could literally hang on my plastic sign if you try to rip it down. <laughs> Does it is it like a rectangular hard yeah. plastic thing exactly. like a board? Just, just your standard everyday political sign that's on the side of the road. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's, so it's, how much would that get in your way if you're climbing the pole? Oh, they would just step over it. They they never even take them down when they have to climb the pole. Okay, okay. Yeah, they so just, it's, it's not a big danger from the way you're describing it. No, yeah. no, no. They don't like the nails. The, the, the guys that actually like that have to climb the poles, they do complain about nails. Well, I don't like a bunch of nails in it. Yeah, well, yeah. But excuse me, they've been putting signs up on telephone poles as long as I've ever seen a telephone pole. So yeah, yeah. It's something they deal with constantly. Right. Yeah. But anyway, that that's yeah. not what you were charged with anyway. Nope, it is no. too because there and here's the here's my charges. A simulated biological attack on Pima County with the intention to terrorize, threaten, intimidate or scare. Okay. Yeah. So it was all about the um the bags. whatever the, whatever the powder was that they Correct. found on those three signs. Correct. So um in my police report it says it it claims and you is huge. You'll see that they, they uh 
they went around to all across Tucson with the bomb squad and literally blocked the lane of traffic and pulled every one of my signs down, or, okay. or quite a few. That I think the police report said they found 24 at the time, and I knew for a fact there was there was a bunch more that they never found, but whatever. But they pulled all of them down, and they said there was no more bags of powder. Yeah, because See, those are the ones I put up. Yeah, so in retrospect, it was like, it seems like, well, maybe not a great idea to let other people be putting them up, right? Um, yeah, uh, that became a, a serious threat now, yeah. But actually, I think it was police that did it. I'm yeah, surprised. and there's no way to no way to really tell who did correct. it. Correct. All, all you know is that it wasn't you, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. And there's no way they could prove that I did it because, uh, excuse me, I did not put those on the back. My right. my fingerprints are probably on the signs. Yeah, I make every one of them myself. Right. So right. And, and show me some video. And, you, where and actually, your fingerprints might be on the bags if the bags were being used for something else by you before. Well, uh, here's another thing. Yes, and this is a problem. I I packed up three f- packs of five signs, and they mentioned, "Do I have to buy my own nails?" So what I did was I taped three of the back of the backs of a pack of signs. I taped three of them with nails in them. And I think they used my bags, the same did ones. You, did you ever get to see the bags that they showed? No, no they just no. described them. They were sandwich baggies. And I, and that's what I taped on the back of three signs, which really okay. stinks okay. here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So somebody, so put, some, somebody put a harmless powder on three of your Correct. signs. Which and it was wrote a, something. And wrote wrote something. Uh, and, right. And I said, right. so check, check the writing. It's not, I did not, I didn't write nothing. And I said, and it sounded me like that was just a warning, not a threat anyway. It says, don't get on skin. Yeah, but but also, well, all right. So when did you find out what that powder was? When did they tell uh, you? That? Technically, we haven't because the, the FBI says that they've done a full test. They brought it into their lab and they, they tested it on site. They said they know for a fact they've tested it in all ways. It's not, har- it's not harmful in any way. Okay. All right. But they said they've only been able to figure out 86% of what it is, I think. But, but they know 100% that it's not dangerous. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They knew that right at the beginning. Yeah. Okay. So they're charging you with making believe that that was dangerous. Yeah. 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 That's what they mean by simulated threat. Simulated, right? yep. And it's a terrorist charge, <sighs> and that is class 2 felony. That's three of my charges, class 2 felony that is equal to murdering someone. Right. Right, right. Hmm. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah, I, I really thought they would. You know, they're just doing it to get me to stop putting the signs up, and then drop the charges. Because I'm thinking, why are they spending all this money? No, because they didn't even charge you with anything about putting the signs up. Apparently, right? Nope. They keep saying, "Oh, this has nothing to do with your signs." And I said, "Really?" And they made me sign one statement and one statement only to get out of jail after I paid them their thirty thousand dollar cash anyway. Um, yeah. But uh, and it says and it's handwritten. It says you cannot make, distribute, or post any signs. <laughs> and I go, Wick. I'm laughing. Right. Going, I mean, it, it kind of makes it look like they really don't want you to make signs, and that yeah. was the issue. Huh? And, and and so so it happens to be. That now MIT and and uh, the geoengineering uh, crew there have openly admitted that Tucson they are now going to use as a test site. And it's supposed to be a little later than this year, I think, where they're going to be spraying geoengineering for the supposed first time in the United States in Tucson. And so they didn't want my science. I'm a little pesky thing putting yeah. up all the science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, it's totally so directly. If, if that's what happened, then the tactic was just get you put in jail forever and there won't be a further problem. I guess, yeah. And at this point, they've got me to where it's illegal for me to put signs up of any kind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. the trial starts on the end of July? Correct. Right? Yep, 30th of July. I, okay. We could use some supporters. <laughs> yeah, and and you were starting to say what the situation with the lawyer is, because obviously you need some really good lawyer to deal with a situation like that. Yeah. Apparently, apparently you have to prove that you're not guilty. 
Well, he, he told me before that he believed that I was not guilty, but at the same time, he warned me that you understand that you might still be found guilty in a court of law when we go to this trial, even though you didn't do it. You mean, you mean the lawyer was saying The lawyer that. said that to me, yeah, yeah. It was like he was trying to scare me to, to sign their their plea agreement, which was <laughs> signing guilty. No, to, that's uh, a terrible idea. Yeah, I mean, but, the only way that would be a good idea is if you actually did what you're signing. Yeah, exactly. That's why I said to him, I don't even want to hear the plea agreement. And he said, well, you got to hear it. And I said, that's fine. And we, we sat and they told me and I, I laughed and I said, <laughs> well, nothing to do with that. Oh, my God, plead guilty. To a felony? Oh, really? Yeah, well, I mean, you could do that if you actually committed the felony. Yeah, exactly. But I didn't. So I said, good luck trying to charge me with this. But here we go. Hmm. Wow. So you think you have the best lawyer lined up at this point? I think so. He was getting very stressed because I didn't haven't made him a payment. And I, I oh. made him a payment of a total of $3,500, but... He he wants a lot more, and uh, so uh, he called me yesterday, and I said, guess what? We are in the way, uh, we are now in the process of paying for the lawyer, and he's like, wow, he was incredible when I told him all what happened, and he said, wow, that's great, because his wife, actually, he told me that his wife is against chemtrails, and, and she knew who I was. <laughs> wow, great, great. <laughs> Yeah, so hopefully a lot of people will hear about this at this point. Yeah, but, um, it's, it's done very well so far. It's been yeah. uh, so awesome that these guys have helped me. I, I thought, I, I mean, I was losing faith in the chemtrail community because I tried to put it out there. I just wasn't successful in getting my story out. Well, there are a lot of people within that community, like all the other ones, that just want to fight with each other instead of yeah. actually get things taken care of. So hopefully that spirit's going to get better. Yeah, well, they I've seen a lot of sport the past few days. It's just it's been incredible. Um, what what, come, what did you hear about this test of, of geoengineering that they're planning to do around Houston? Um, a few people had had left me like comments saying, you know, you ought to check it out. And all I did was Googled MIT uh, weather program or something like that, and it, it hmm. came up immediately where they're talking about it that Tucson's going to be the beginning of where they're going to start doing it. And so I, I don't know. I don't have an exact actual link, but anyone I've told about that, they go, "Oh yeah, here it is. It's pretty pretty easy to find." And okay. we'll look yeah. for that. Interesting. Yeah, there's there's no reason, as far as I can tell, and I've been looking at geoengineering for a long time, and um, I can't think of any good reason to ever do it anywhere on the planet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All, all of the destabilized weather that they're complaining about and the global warming and the climate change and all this stuff is, as far as I can tell, primarily being caused by the spray. Yeah, literally. And, our, yeah, if, we, if there's going to be any global warming, it's guess what? It's going to be a cause of it. Yeah, exactly right. I can right. see it. I can feel it here in Tucson, and I'm sure everyone can. When you get the chemtrails in between you and the sun, it's like a magnifying glass. It becomes hotter. Well, it definitely destabilizes whatever is going to be normal so that it can't happen like it's supposed to, and it changes rainfall patterns and all yeah. kinds of stuff. Plus, But as much or more than that, it's important that it poisons the whole biosphere. Yeah, and it's So doing it's that. definitely not just about the climate. It, it's making it agriculturally impossible to grow non-GMO crops. Yeah. And um, it gets in the water supplies. And actually, if it, if somebody came and poured the chemtrail residue into the reservoir of water, they would be arrested as a terrorist oh, yeah. right away. But I mean, spraying, spraying it all over the place from airplanes, apparently it's okay. Yeah. And, you know, that's why I'm saying, at least for Pima County here, the charges mm -hmm. that they're charging me with. Okay. So that means it's exactly what they're doing. Does anyone out there feel intimidated? threatened uh, or, or harassed by chemtrails, well, you don't even have to prove that they're harmful, which in this case they are harmful, but apparently there's a law in Pima County where they can't be doing that to people, right. threatening, intimidating, and harassing by anything, uh, any of their actions. So I think we ought to turn that around and use this for charging somebody. They keep yeah. claiming, they keep saying, it's not us, you know, it's them, it's not I know. us. It's been tried. I saw a uh, video of a meeting they had in 
the western part of Arizona. Yes, that was just that was great. I remember what what I don't remember what town that was in. Do you? Well, they did it in I think in Bisbee. I didn't actually go to it. I I, I've got videos on my channel about it. And they had a state senator was there at the meeting. Yes, correct. And and then at, get Kelly this Moore. the next election. So so she came and she actually listened. But she didn't do what she promised us to do, is respond back, and we gave her a time limit. Right. And uh, she just totally dissed us, basically, since then, right? Yeah. They also and had so representatives from the state were at that meeting, and they were in charge yeah. of saying that they had no authority to do anything. Yeah, exactly. And then, so, so that woman, now get this, the next election came around. Uh -huh. They put commercials on the regular TV, okay, the mainstream garbage, yeah. saying... Here's Chemtrail Kelly. Yeah, I remember. About that center, yeah. And she didn't even help us. She just <clears> listened <throat> and laughed and never right. responded. <laughs> but they attacked her because yeah. she listened to us. Yeah, it's very coordinated. Yeah. So um, that's the problem is that somehow there's a control being exercised over all the so called representatives to prevent them from telling the truth. Yeah. I mean, and I suspect it's a combination of bribes and blackmail and the usual stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a hard one. This is, this is it, it figures that I went and picked the biggest conspiracy theory in existence, the most expensive, the most hidden one that exists. Yeah, it's and it's, it's not just that it's the biggest. It's that it's tied to everything else. So yes, it, if it gets exposed, then there's a danger that everything else gets exposed, too. Yeah, but, you know, here's the fact, especially for activists. Uh, if you sit by and they come and charge me with this, this is ridiculous, then guess what? They're coming for you next. Right, right. That's just exactly. the way it's going to be. I mean, I was very public and very open. And I don't break laws, so I figured I, I can't be, you know, what are they going to do to me? So, so I didn't tell you part about they came and killed me for this, and I say killed me because... Um, in 2011, they came and bashed my head in after I had uh, spoke to the gentleman, uh, a couple of them actually, I spoke to Michael Murphy and uh, uh, Chris Maple, who made What in the World Are They Sprang? Right. And that's what triggered them to come and bash my head in. They, they asked me, they called me after they made What in the World Are They Sprang? And they said, man, we got your phone number from so many different people, we figured we'd, we better call you at some point. Who, who called you? Uh, uh, Michael Murphy first, and then uh, Chris Maple. Okay. okay. Okay, and they said, what we want is we want some footage um, of uh, you know, your footage so we can include you in our next movie, Why in the World Are They Spraying? And I said, great, yeah, no problem. Again, send me something, or, or you wanted me to send it? They said, I'm going to overnight you a hard drive, and please over, put your stuff on it immediately that you want in. Just pick out whatever you think is your best footage and put it on the hard drive and overnight it back. And I said, great, I'll do that. So he says, well, okay, what's your address? And he's in California. I'm in Tucson. Mm -hmm. My phone's fully charged. I had updated it. It's no problems with my phone. And as soon as I start reading off my address to him, well, my phone shuts off. Mm -hmm. And his phone, apparently, because it took me a while to get in touch with him again, about a half an hour. And he says, my God, that my phone shut off when you tried to tell me your address. Right. So, so we laughed it off. And that was with Chris Maple that I was talking to. And uh, so we laughed it off. So I guess they don't want us talking now, do they? We laughed. And so I gave him my address. And the next night, I received the hard drive. And I loaded it up. And that's when they came and bashed my head in that night. Three, wow. un, uh, we have no identification of who these people are. They came, and the first they took a baseball bat and smashed out my, and what's funny is they smashed out my Haskell Films logo on the back of my car. And that was to get my attention, I think. Right. So I hear this glass break. It, it, like, it just got dark. It was like 7 o'clock at night and mm -hmm. on a Friday night. So I go, well, what the heck was that glass? And I... I go running out of my room, and I ask my dad, I said, was that glass breakage? He said, yeah, that was, that was a, a lot of glass. And so I go run into the front door, and I open the door, step out, and that's the last thing I remember. And I woke up about a month later wow. out of coma. Hmm. And they, they broke my head 
with like objects in their hands. They said they these guys are dressed in black and they just continued to bash me in the head until my brains came out. And they, I, I may not even save you this story, but but I you know I went to UMC I guess in a hospital in an ambulance and they said that I was is I was it was the, the only craziest thing they had ever seen <laughs> that. They said I was as dead as dead gets. My brains are coming out of my head. The head's bashed. And I got up off the gurney and started explaining what these people had to do to me, I guess. That's what they said. Uh, I laughed because, hey, well, you know, what What else am I going to do, man? They, 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 they did a number on my head. And uh, I came back in, in uh, another month after I woke up out of the coma. Um, one month I had to go every morning to the hospital administrator and get them to agree to let me go. Cause I was like, I'm fine. Everything's good. And I literally was hundred percent right back to the person I was. Wow. Wow. So whoever wanted the sign activity to stop at that point, that was, uh, six years before they charged you with anything yeah. uh, illegal. Right. Correct. And, and they just tried the, the, uh, gangster approach. Yeah, and it didn't work out for them. They killed me, but ah, sorry, <laughs> I had board right. board things to right. do. Right, they failed. Huh. Yeah. yeah, because you know I'm totally not against police or anybody like that, but no, people, I'm not people in, in, in people in important roles like that, they have this great responsibility not to commit crimes in the color of law. Yeah, and even if they can get away with it, and I'm talking to any police that are listening to this show is that you guys are highly respected by me and a lot of other people, but, but you're supposed to be protecting the citizens and the residents of the area where you're working. And not if you get illegal orders and you're out there playing the part of mafia or arresting people for things they're framed for or stuff that's not true, then that's a huge responsibility on you to tell the truth. No matter what happens, it's like that's the spirit that the country was formed and, and, and what it was all supposed to be about was freedom and truth. And so when you get put in a position of trust like that, um, even if you're under a lot of peer pressure and you're sure you can get away with it, you don't really ever get away with anything because it stays in your consciousness even if nobody else knows. And that's very powerful subconsciously. It pulls you into some kind of a situation where that's going to get resolved. And you don't really want to have to go through that. It'd be better to just stick with complete honesty and uh, ethics and morality from the beginning, and then good things happen from that. So I'm just encouraging people. I know there's a really strong uh, peer pressure, and you want to keep your job and you keep your income going to take care of your family. I totally understand that. But but if it gets to being told illegal orders that go against deeper principles that you shouldn't be violating. Um, you can't follow those orders. That's what that's what Oath Keepers is about. That great organization under Stuart yes. Rhodes that's all over the country is that, you know, they have great respect for the military and law enforcement and all these government agency uh, pseudo you know, law enforcement people and everything, but they recognize that they have this tremendous responsibility to uphold the spirit and the letter of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. And no matter what order from how high an authority tells you to violate that, um, you can't do it. And all the, all the perks that you get uh, from being in this power position that get you a lot of prestige or, or abilities to do things you couldn't ordinarily do, that's the fun part. But the other part is the responsibility part, and you, you cannot violate that. Even if nobody sees your own consciousness sees, and things follow that, that turn into a lesson that you really don't want to have. So it's better to uh, to adhere to that morality all the way through and feel good at the end of it. So I don't know if anybody cares at this point, but sure. I, 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 I care about the future of each individual police person, and the only way that you can have a good future is feel really clear and proud of what you're doing. Even if you've done it bad before, you know, you have a chance to change now and either keep doing really good stuff or change so that you are and 
don't go along with bad friends any more than little kids should, you know. And you, your little kid is going off to third grade at, at school, and you, you know that their biggest danger is following friends who are misguided and have bad intent. It's the same for the big kids in grown-up bodies, that they get around the other people working in the, the police department or the military or anything, and they're going to be corrupt, and they want you to be one of them so that you can all support each other, and that's your test. And you, you don't have to do anything terrible to them. You just have to not go along with that. And that, that's your test to see degree of uh, maturity that you've got inside yourself, whether you're NSA or uh, CIA people or police or anything. It's all, we're just all being tested constantly. And you guys have to start making sure you pass those tests. You know, do something good for your country. And uh, if somebody's framed then it's your obligation not to support that uh, wrongdoing. And if there's a trial and you know the truth, then it's your responsibility to be a whistleblower and tell the truth. And those are the people who are the most honored in the end. So I just wanted to mention that. I don't mean to divert off somewhere else, but I want you to have allies within the system. You know, there are people, maybe even the people who did bad things, they could become hero, heroes in the whole situation yeah. by deciding, look, it, there's a higher principle involved there than my ego. And then any of my peer pressure, you know, sources like that is to tell the truth. And I'm telling that to people who are monitoring this show or anybody who's listening. Um, you're, each individual is the most important individual. Yeah, and you have the opportunity to do something that's going to affect everybody else. Then you start a new wave of positive peer pressure, and people say, wow, did you see what that guy did? That was really brave. I think I'm going to do the same thing. And then it spreads, and things change. Absolutely. Yes. Anyway. Um, Okay, so somebody hired the the gangsters to come and and kill you, and it didn't work. Yeah. 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 Uh, that they messed it up and you you lived, and then later on they tried the um, the arrest him for terrorism ploy. Yeah, yeah. And Ter- about terrorism. to go to court for that, just like Clouseau would call it. And I think anybody that could just see my my channel for a few minutes could see exactly how bogus this is. You know, obviously right. all I do is love people, or I wouldn't have wasted all my time and effort to inform people. Exactly. Yeah. No, my, my feel for what you're doing, and I wasn't physically there any of the time, but um, I've talked to people who have a criminal intent, and, and you don't sound like them at all to me. And no. I, I think that if your description is accurate that you're giving about what happened, yes. then any, anybody who's aware of this within the enforcement agencies should pass their test, stand up, be courageous, and support you. And tell their superiors that um, we're not going to be doing this junk anymore. There are, there are real people of, of malicious intent that we do need to be stopping. Yes. Uh, not, not with gangster tactics, but with, with correct procedures. And um, the people who are framed, we're not going to be doing that anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's, that's the truth. Yeah. That can change everything. One, a, one or a few of those guys stand up. And a lot of time and money for a trial gets saved. Yeah. So I'd like it's, to see that happen. I have a hard time believing that this is even real, but it's it's happening to me right yeah, now. Yeah, they can, they can do it to anybody. And so, you know, if, if there are people who are wanting to not have everybody poisoned by geoengineering and realizing that this is a, a really important program to the highest level Yes, um, people in the global rulers. It's not about money at all at that level, and yep. it's it's part of a, an extermination program. I, I'm I'm not saying that lightly. I've looked into it for a long time, and it it ties together with multiple other programs that are directed against the population, and they're real, and they use the money motive to keep people under them working as enforcers. But any of those people within that system that have a change of heart and decide, you know, I'm only here in the physical body for a short time and I should do something honorable and something true, 
And yeah. that's, that's my real opportunity. My life's going to be over soon enough. And I'd like to look back when it's ending and feel good about what I did. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm a person that's good with God. And I know, I know what I've done, so I'm proud. Yeah, nobody gets away with anything. And it's not because some really nasty God is keeping a scorecard for you. It's because it's closer than that. It's inside your own consciousness. And that's why there's no way to get away. Because you are the one who knows what you did. Yeah. And you're the one who knows if you told the truth. And I'll stand proud. For, for I, I am, if anything, more of a hero status, not, not the opposite. Um, yeah, I totally agree. Anybody who's trying, you know, it goes by motive. It's not your errors because everybody makes mistakes, but it's your motive. Why are you doing stuff? And if you're doing it because you really want everybody to be okay, including even the police, they're, they're breathing yeah. the chemtrail garbage as well. Yeah, exactly. And, it, and it, it's real. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's real. It's well documented. You know, we're talking with, uh, Friends all the time, globalskywatch.com, geoengineeringwatch.org. And in fact, globalskywatch.com has links on it to geoengineering educational sites all over the world. And yeah. if people want to get in touch with those and have you know more education about what's really going on, the ones who don't want this exposed are the ones who want people framed. And all the honorable people within the enforcement divisions, they need to stand up and, and tell the truth no matter what. I agree. So, um, aside from that, um, as far as what, you, what you're working on now, aside from this trial, is it mostly geoengineering or are you still working on other issues connected with it also? No, no, that's... I mean that's it on the on the trial, but and, and I haven't been speaking to my lawyer very often about it. Um, there, I don't know what they're planning on doing to to prove their point, but they they're trying to call some of my friends to court, and they're they're like, "That's fine, I'll, I'll go and testify." For yeah, them. that should be okay, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they, I, you know, I have so many followers here in Tucson. I have had people. Uh, I've had two or three people that dedicated their websites to me. I've had uh, just numerous people that, that are just, you know, that contacted me and thanked me or uh, tried to pay me stuff. And I said, no, I, I don't need any money. And uh, I, I got to admit, the one time I got, I had a guy, he says, no, you're, you're taking it. And he says, you're going to hang on right here. And he went to Circle K and he pulled out $100. Yeah, I, I think you need to be um, getting your legal fund together, don't you? Yeah, that's that's really it, because I had to come up with $10,000 right off the bat to pay my lawyer, which I hadn't. I only paid 3500 of it. He's right. saying now that it's $30,000 $30, total, right. you know, because he, he had to go back. We've already gone to court like five or six times for this. Right, right. And it's, the whole thing's ridiculous. FBI's running the whole trial, and... Uh, first, they, the judge, my judge, we, we were very happy, me and my lawyer, because the first time when I was still in jail, they kept me for eight weeks with mm -hmm. no priors, okay? but I'm in jail, so I went to court when I was in the in orange jumpsuit and handcuffed and everything, and uh, the judge says, you know, we're going to wait on Mr. Haskell's case, and, and he, he made this comment, and, and he goes, besides, we're waiting for the FBI lady to get here. So mm -hmm. then we got to my case, and we all sat and laid in. And I'm like, what What are we waiting on? And I guess we were waiting because the FBI lady was late. Right. So she shows up, and then we continue with the court. And he says, he says to her, he goes, you know, I maybe I didn't read it, or I don't know. I'm a little confused here. Maybe I read it wrong. Can you? And he's talking to the FBI lady. He goes, can you help me with this? Because is Mr. Haskell really in here for putting up chemtrail signs? And, and she's all, no. No, sir. He said no, and she went on to <laughs> explain stuff. And he goes, "Okay, all right, okay." Because I, I, I was like, "Wow," you know. And well, so, so, so did out. she say what what you were in there for? Uh, no, yeah, she explained to, to him uh, the, the same garbage that they they charged me with. But, but basically, then he comes back and he goes, 
So do you, you suppose we're going to have some federal charges here? And he's being like totally sarcastic. And she's all, no, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. And I'm sitting here thinking, well, why am I in jail? And they're, he's, they're making jokes of about it. Right. And she right. says, I don't think we're going to charge him with federal crimes because these are state ones they're charging you with. Uh-huh. Right. But that's when he asked her that. You suppose you're going to be putting federal charges? Oh, she says, no, no, probably not. No. Okay. And so guess what happens? The judge off the case the next time we go. He says, well, I guess I put in for my uh, transfer along. That was like 15, 20 years ago. But, hey, they just said I've approved. I'm going to family court. I was like, oh, my God. My lawyer's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I go, you don't think they, they moved him? Are you kidding me? Yeah, so now I got a totally different judge, and she is, I've never seen anything like this. She doesn't speak. She looks like she's a skeletal remains, and uh, she, she's not very nice. Right. So I said, yeah, you don't think they did that on purpose? I, yeah, whatever. Okay. I'm sure they didn't. Yeah, whatever. So, yeah, my judge, he's out of there. Wow. So... So what what do you want supportive people to do to help you? Well, you know, just tell the story would be really good just to, to let as many people know about it. But even if people have a dollar, anything, because I'll tell you something. In the past, I haven't asked for one dollar. I my, my YouTube page, I have never accepted a dollar from them. I've never asked for, for, for 10 years of making these signs. I pay for the materials all myself. But right, right now. They took my job because I worked for the city of Tucson, and they made sure I got fired because I had no vehicle. I'm a right. delivery person. Right. I used the vehicle. So I lost my job, and I need to help. I need help now because I'm, I'm strapped, and my lawyer was ready to quit my case because I didn't okay. pay him. So how would people get money to your legal fund? Um, um, we started a PayPal account, and it is it has gone from nothing to uh, over four thousand dollars in the last three days. Good, good. That's a good start. Yeah, I'm. I'm so you just need to, that to multiply by ten as soon as possible, huh? Yeah, yeah. If if possible, I mean, I'll tell you, I, it brought me to life just reading the comments. The money oh, yeah. was twenty dollars a crack from all over the world. Well, oh, it it should have encouraged your lawyer too, right? Yeah, he was out of town until yesterday. So, <laughs> but as soon as I told him, he was, you know, but he, he's a lawyer. He's not act. He's got to act like he's not human. But, yeah, but he said, I, "Wow, yeah. that's that's impressive." I told him, you know, we got over three thousand so far, and it already moved up to four thousand since then. Okay, and how do people find that PayPal account? It's on. Uh, well, it's Haskell Films at Yahoo is my uh, email address and that's okay. one word h-a-s-k-e-l-l-f-i-l-m-z is in zebra uh-huh. at yahoo.com that's my email okay. but actually you can go to any one of my recent videos or the videos that i'm explaining it on my channel yeah and, and there'll be a link right below that to the paypal account okay okay great great that's very good other people have emailed me and i gave them my address and they and they've sent checks Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so do you need to um, to give that address, or what do you do well, for that? Well, if, if anyone you know can't, because most of the time, I think you can pretty much pay on that PayPal with any, yeah. pretty much, you, you right? Know, any kind of debit card or whatever. So, you know, that usually will handle it. But if people just simply don't want, they're not part of the system, they don't want uh-huh. right. that, then they can email me, and I'll I'll send them my my address. I'm not, I mean, I've always given it out, but, you know. I, okay, and, and tell me your, your email again. The email is uh, haskellfilms, one word, at yahoo.com. Okay, yeah, that's good. So, and what about, do you think it's constructive for people to send in comments to the, um, the state or the city or the court that you're dealing with? Or 
you know, that's something I, I thought it through, and I've had a few people going, well, you know, be careful about that. You don't, you know, if, if we Yeah, if, they, if it just makes them hate you, then it might exactly. not be Exactly. Yeah. And I thought, ah, that's maybe possible that it's going to really bother me. I'll tell you one person that I'd love to, everyone in the uncle to call is, is Detective Garnand. And he's the one in charge of this. And he knows. I haven't. I mean, they were there. They searched everything I've ever owned in my life. They went to our cabin, kicked the uh-huh. doors. So they know for a fact that I've no crimes. Okay? They, okay. they know everything about my life. And the only thing they could find was a little bit of marijuana. That is okay. all. Which no. you're, not ch- you're not charged with that, right? No. No. Okay. I even had a medical marijuana card for this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, but they took all that too, anyway. So. Right, right. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. But they searched. Believe me, they needed nothing, and they said they were looking for bombs, um, uh, guns, ammunition, and amazingly enough, they didn't get any of my guns. Which yeah. I've been a hunter all my life. I've got a, plenty of guns, but right. apparently, well, they, Arizona's one of the states that recognizes it's not evil for you to have firearms. Yeah. Well. You're darn right it's not. I mean, well, you know, when your daughter's walking in bad areas, and you know, you're darn right she should have a gun. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Like I, I definitely agree with that. So Myself, have you had a, a have, gun. You, have you had any uh, opportunity to communicate with this detective that knows all about everything? Oh yeah, I've, I had, and when I kept trying to contact him, can I have my vehicle back, please? Uh, I'm losing my job. He actually tried to press charges on me for calling him too many times. I said, what? Wow. For the wow. third time. I called him three times. They, they got the digital reports. Okay, I go, you're kidding. He tried to charge me with harassment for wow. new charges. I said, you, 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 you guys, I'd love him to get about 10,000 phone calls. That man. Yeah, knows. well, you know I, what I'd like him to get is a change of mind. Yeah. That, Decide to be honest instead of harassing people. Exactly. And do something real with their job. Don't be bothered. Yeah, because, like because they're, they're needed. You know, their, their skills are useful if they could really be tracking down the people who are doing harm. Yeah, correct. Not the, not the ones who are not hurting anybody. Yeah. I guess that's a hard lesson to learn. It takes people a long time sometimes. Yeah. Definitely. Interesting. Interesting. So what else, what else do people need to know about this whole situation, you know, to have a good grasp of the whole thing? Is well, there anything? just one, one of the, the biggest things that I think is, is take a look at my YouTube channel. I've got, like, I'm not sure exactly, but, like, close to 900 videos, okay? okay. I know one thing is you can see exactly who I am and all about the things I've done. I, I was very open about it. when I, But they, they wanted to know who was putting up the signs. Well, I told them. I, I was very public. Right, good. Yeah, good. So, so just seeing the fact that go to my channel and, and you can see. I mean, I have done amazing things. You have mm-hmm. no idea. I, I remember one day I, I painted my car hood. Uh, the, the the you know the hood of my car because it was a little damaged anyway so I mm-hmm. so, so I I painted put a huge sign on put it right on a major road and I chained it up to the to, to a street sign it was funny it lasted oh, that's interesting at least three weeks yeah it was you, huge. You, you chained your car to a street sign no I chained a hood the hood of my car I painted it into a huge nice beautiful sign oh you mean you took it off the car. Yeah, and painted it. Well, it already said Ron Paul 2012. Is I okay. when you see my channel, I had um, the first Ron Paul car. I had Ron Paul sign my car in 2010, yeah. and it had this huge logo on the side, Ron Paul Revolution, and he had signed. It, it's it. interesting that you mention Ron Paul because he's, you know, what he's focused on all the time is the Constitution, the Declaration of yes. Independence, and ev- the gov- government acting according, you know, honoring the oath of office and all this stuff. Correct. Well, it turns out that when he was trying to run for president and he was a congressman for so long, um, the Fusion Center uh, became famous for telling, I think it was the Missouri police, that not only Ron Paul, but anybody who had a Ron Paul sign was yeah. automatically a terrorist. Yeah, no, they did. They literally, I remember, I was being harassed for that too. Yeah, yeah. and in fact, the police, a lot of them believed it. 
And when they'd stop anybody in Missouri who had a Ron Paul bumper sticker, sometimes they get very, very terrified and they'd draw their guns and, you know, <laughs> approaching the window to see if the terrorist was going to bomb them or something just because they were voting for Ron Paul. Yep. It was really, really strange. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. So things are not always what they seem. Yeah, you're darn right. It turns out that what we've been lied to about basically everything in history. Yeah. Everything. You've just been lied to. And everybody should realize now that the lines behind the uh, airplanes, which we're going to have technical backup on this next week when Russ Tanner's on the show, uh -huh. those lines, none of them are condensation. Correct. They're all particulates, toxic metals and biological elements and things like that. Yeah. We've got tests by the thousands, and, and they didn't care. They were, right. So what what is kind of ironic is that you're being charged with these crimes, <laughs> which basically boil down to trying to expose one of the biggest terrorist acts that's ever happened. Yeah, exactly. And I, I am a I am a person that is coming from a great family. My, my family is well known in this city. We used to have the largest linen company in this town. Everybody loved my grandpa. I, uh, I used to be a car salesman and I literally broke the record for how good of a car salesman. In other words, uh, how many people uh, wrote letters that this guy's incredible. He doesn't, you know, <laughs> lie to you like North. Yeah. I mean, so I, I was the number one guy being put up on the brochure of, of the beautiful letters, you know, showing how. Yeah. Or, so, I mean, my whole life, I've he never done anything close to what they're saying. Yeah, not all car salesmen get famous for being honest. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I hold a gold status. And, and most, even you work for Chrysler, you don't hold the gold status because if you have two customers, two customers, that are a little bit upset with you, you will lose your gold status. Literally. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, besides becoming aware of that, the people who are trying to give you a hard time should really on their own, when, you know, they don't have to let their friends see them or anything. When you're at home, look on your computer, geoengineeringwatch.com and, I mean, sorry, globalskywatch.com, geoengineeringwatch.org. Look at the extensive documentation of what's going on in the sky, and you'll see what um, Chris was referring to. It's not yep. some crazy made-up conspiracy theory or anything like that. It, it's the opposite. And you guys should be supporting him in that because it's affecting your families as well. And, you know, even having harmless, if having harmless powder connected by some unknown person to three of these signs is bad, even though it's harmless, yeah. What about dumping the harmful powder all over the sky every day in, you know, millions of tons of it all over the world? That might not be very good. And maybe you guys should be standing up against that, too. Yeah. That's so. just 100%. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah, I want to I see our friends in the police department wake up and start acting honorably. Some of them already are. But the ones who are acting the worst... There's kind of a rush that goes with that feeling of power when you're an official legal criminal within the system somewhere. I but guess. It, it's temporary. And what happens in the end is since you're not being true to yourself, it's yourself that ends up holding you accountable for it and leading you into situations to learn better. But it's, it's really wise to not let it go to that point. As soon as somebody mentions it to you, think about what they're saying and change course in the middle of it, start supporting things that are true and using your office to do something really useful to stop the bad things that are happening, that would be really a good idea. And that's open to anybody. So I'm encouraging you guys to do that. Become friends. So um, I'm trying to think of anything that we didn't cover because I think we've gone over a lot of the detail. Yeah, that, that kind of covered a lot of it, definitely. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know. my feeling is that even though, I, as I say, I wasn't there, and it's totally possible to fool me, as has been proven over and over again, yeah. my, feel, my feeling is that what you're saying is as it seems, and that um, the whole objective of this thing is to make sure, even at the cost of locking somebody up, you know, fraudulently, that 
people don't hear on a mass scale about geoengineering because it's one of their cherished uh, elements of the agenda yeah. to yeah. to poison the whole biosphere. That's really what it comes down to. Yes. And the, the weather's just one casualty of many. And they don't want that coming out, so I think they have to silence it. That means that people anywhere in the world that are listening should do whatever they can to not only support Chris, but realize this is going to play out in the same way in many locations. And without um, sinking to the same level as the violence of the power structure that is in force right now, um, if, you, if you don't have malice for anybody, your power is far, far greater. And in the end, it guarantees that it'll come out well. I'm just encouraging that. Absolutely. Um, okay. Well, thank you, Chris. I, I hope that um, everybody, including the people who have given you a hard time within the law enforcement agencies, will have a change of heart and realize that they're your most powerful potential allies. And um, that would be an example of unity for humanity instead of playing a role at the expense of people and expense of the truth. So realize this is your opportunity to stand up for something better. We'll see how it goes. So So true. Thanks for the time and being with us, and uh, we'll watch how things go, and hopefully people are getting ready to support you right now, and they'll, they'll stay on it. Well, I, well, I want to thank anyone supporting me. This is, it's been amazing to see the support. It's been incredible. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It needs to get much stronger and much quicker and, and uh, really start snowballing. Um, yeah. and, let, and, and let's, let's check let's, out my history. Yeah, yeah, your history, everything on your YouTube channel. Um, I, did you mention whether there's a website for people to go to, too? Um, well, there's uh, the A Plain Truth, and they're the ones, uh, 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 Jamie. But that's that, that's you know, not your site, though, right? No, no. I, the only thing I have is, is my YouTube channel, and I, okay. I've got like 1,400 subscribers, which is now okay. all of a sudden jumping up. I'm probably getting to get to 1,500 or something real shortly, but yeah. uh, I've been around for a long time, and you know, see my videos. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, everybody, for supporting Chris, and um, let's turn things around on the planet and make it a nicer place here for the kids that are getting born. So hold on and we'll say goodbye in the break here. Okay. So there goes Chris Haskell and now you know his story. And uh, make sure you remember to check out his YouTube channel, Haskell Films, H-A-S-K-E-L-L-F-I-L-M-Z. And um, also you have some confirmation of how important it is to our rulers to keep us totally in the dark about what they're really doing and the incredible coordination of all these assaults against humanity, of which geoengineering is one of the big ones, but not certainly not the only one. Um, the reason you're supposed to think that people who believe in conspiracies are, are so crazy is because it's beyond conspiracies. It's it, I say often that the conspiracy theory people are completely wrong. It's way deeper than they imagine. Um, so work like Chris's is... is uh, and what so many other people are doing on geoengineering, vaccines, GMOs, really should be against all of chem- chemical agriculture if they knew the truth. Uh, nuclear power, drug medicine, not enough against drug medicine, really. People still believe it's great. And it has its place, but very, very limited. Anyway, the work on all these issues is very important. But what supports that work and really energizes it is... Um, and, and also decides what its outcome is going to be, is really consciousness. So consciousness is not just a belief system or certainly not a religion or anything that you just memorize and you know do over and over again. It, it's the most powerful work that we can do. It really is the ultimate meaning of waking up. So waking up is not just being able to recite what's going on in the world or what's wrong or things like that. That's... That's good awareness on on the intellectual level, but self-awareness is what drives the whole thing. Not instead of activism, but at the same time. 
not instead of the work that you're doing at your job or in your home or taking care of the kids or in school or digging a ditch or whatever you're doing to make a living, not instead of that, at the same time as that. So, yeah, it's great if you spend time an hour when you first wake up in the morning or whatever time you can doing meditation. But the real meditation is what you're doing the rest of the day and the night. So become aware of that because you're doing something and there's mental programs running around your head with thought and emotional components. Most people are just so used to it they don't even pay any attention and they think that's them. It's not. That's where the whole power of karmic energy is, is based, is in those programs. So if we're not even aware of them, we can't do much to redirect them and and get free of that and decide what we want to happen. The other thing to remember is get your health and your energy to a higher level by natural means. Um, learn the timeless natural laws that you can use for health and energy that have been taught by all the teachers who knew that from the beginning of humanity on this planet. That's where modern medical industry is completely out to lunch, arrogant and has no idea, but you can. You can help them by example. So take super good care of yourself, especially when you're under stress, not less. You know, that's when we usually slack off and have all these excuses. Well, you know, things are so intense right now. I just don't have time to exercise the right way or don't have time to sleep enough or have to eat junk food. No, you don't. <laughs> if your intent is there, you'll figure out a way. It's high priority because everything else, everything else you do is um, affected by it. So if you keep yourself in great condition, raise your energy by natural means, not drugs, not drugs. These are way more powerful than drugs if you do it right. That changes the effect of all the work you're doing. So instead of having an excuse during that time that you don't have time, you do it this opposite way and then your work actually turns out better. And in addition to the physical aspect like that, it's also important to become aware of the programming I just mentioned so that you can redirect it. If you're not aware of it and you just think it's your own thoughts and your own feelings, instead of realizing it's all a, a repetitive program, that you don't have to be hypnotized by it. If you don't realize that stuff, you can't redirect it. And it's going to get you into all kinds of trouble like it already has. And you can just put a stop to that, not by force, but by relaxed awareness and then learning how to redirect it. Very powerful. It affects everything you do and the outcome of everything in your life. Took me forever to even get a clue about any of that. I made so many dumb mistakes that I'm just hoping that you don't have to make. And so that's why we're sharing the information. So if you want help with that or anything about difficult life and health situations and want to share information that we can't totally get into on the public platform here, check out what we're doing at lostartsradio.com forward slash club, C-L-U-B, lostartsradio.com forward slash club. And whether you're interested in that or not, keep up with our YouTube videos. Those are all free. And um, if you want anything covered or addressed or questions or any comments or anything on that, you can always send them to our Lost Arts Radio Facebook page or group or to the forum on lostartsradio.com or email in questions to cover on the videos or in the club on uh, richard at lostartsradio.com. So thanks for being with us here tonight, getting to hear about Chris's story and all these other important things. I just remind you to value the time that you've got, whatever it is. Use it well. And I'll see you next time. Introducing Lost Arts Radio Live, our new Saturday late afternoon, early evening, one hour live stream show. This new show precedes our Planetary Healing Club, which starts at 9 p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. Pacific. The Planetary Healing Club, which is not free and open to the public, but you can join for a minimum donation of just $10 a month. Our new live stream show, which is free, starts Saturdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern and 4.30 Pacific. It can be accessed by going to lostartsradio.com live. 
You can tune into our live stream from our Facebook page at facebook.com slash lostartsradio, from our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash lostartsradio, as well as both Periscope and Twitter at Lost Arts Radio. You can ask questions during the show by using the chat function on YouTube or make a comment on Facebook during the live stream. Once again, that's Lost Arts Radio Live, Saturdays at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. As of January 2018, the Saturday Live Call-In Show is now an interactive video platform called the Planetary Healing Club. The cost is just a $10 minimum monthly donation automatically billed through your PayPal account. Sign up at lostartsradio.com slash club. The Planetary Healing Club is every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. You get your link to participate in the show upon signing up as a member. Those shows are also archived as well for club members. Listen to our new shows with guests every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. All Sunday shows with guests have archives freely available on our website at lostartsradio.com. You can also find them at blogtalkradio.com forward slash lostartsradio, as well as our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash the letter C forward slash Lost Arts Radio. Mixcloud at mixcloud.com forward slash Lost Arts Radio. And finally, look us up under the podcast directory on iTunes. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Lost Arts Radio or on Twitter at Lost Arts Radio. Be sure to join the free Lost Arts Radio Facebook group as well. Just search for Lost Arts Radio group within Facebook. You can also join our forum on our website if you want to interact with other listeners. We also have links to all of the great independent musicians whose music we feature each week on Lost Arts Radio. When you do your Amazon shopping, please use Amazon Smile Program at smile.amazon.com. And when you choose Lost Arts Research Institute in Sedona, Arizona as your charity, Amazon will donate half a percent of whatever your order total is to Lost Arts Research Institute to help fund the building of the school and keep our radio show on the air. Please visit lostartsresearchinstitute.org for more information on the school we want to build. Be sure to sign up for our free weekly newsletter on our site under the radio show tab or right from the button on our Facebook page. Contact Richard at richard at lostartsradio.com or myself, Doug Diamond, at doug at lostartsradio.com. Thanks again for listening to Lost Arts Radio, and we'll see you again next week. Leave your fear of the unknown And leave the planet you call home Leave all the thoughts you think you know It's time to let them go Let it go Extend your hands towards the stars And dip your toes in the valley of Mars Celestial storm in my backyard And the universe explodes Explodes. Let's see how fast our hearts can go Cause you and I could be that comet in the sky If we hold our breath, take a leap and close our eyes We could fly, I believe if we try, we could fly Now the future's here We'll watch our dark days disappear I see the water running clear Plans of fate are washed away Washed away Frozen stardust crystal caves Sparkling towers, cityscapes 
a dream or are we awake? Hand in hand through outer space Time stands still for us today Cause you and I could be that comet in the sky If we hold our breath, take a leap and close our eyes We could fly Cause you and I could be that comet in the sky If we hold our breath, take a leap and close our eyes We could fly, I believe if we try We could fly, like the heroes in the sky We could fly